Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1767. Of course, March is Women's Month, and here on Cars Yeah, we are celebrating women in the automotive industries by having conversations with 23 inspiring automotive enthusiasts throughout the month. These are all women who are shifting the conversation. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in beautiful Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania with a very special guest by the name of Brandy Sanders. Brandy, welcome to Cars. Yeah, are you buckled up and putting the oh. gear in, ready to re- release the clutch, as they say? I was going to say, I'm so sorry to interrupt you because that was such a gorgeous intro, but I'm actually in New York City. The mailing address is in the carry <laughs> Well, you know what? That's okay. I think this is fun to leave this kind of stuff. New York, Pennsylvania, PA, wherever you are. You're with me today. So I'm the one that doesn't know where the heck I am today. So you're doing fine. (laughs) I'm the one that's a little mixed up, but that's okay. Uh, You know, as I always say, uh, are you ready to put in the gear and release the clutch? I am eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. We're going to do what they say can't be done. Yeah, we got it. I'm eastbound. Let's go. We've got a trucker on our hands here. (laughs) There you go. I love it. A little Smokey and the Bandit to start off Cars Yeah today. That's a way to wake you up. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing most people, other than now we know you're a truck driver, (laughs) (laughs) that people don't know about you, Brandy? Well, I graduated from Hollywood Stunt School by jumping off a three-story building. Yes. What? No way. Absolutely, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, now, absolutely. when you jump off a building, do you jump into a, one of those big airbags or they in those boxes or how do you do that? <laughs> I just bounced when I hit the bottom. No, it, oh, ouch. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was just a, it's a standard Hollywood stunt school. Really great experience. I had my pre very early midlife crisis in my 20s. And so I took this stunts class and there was this it's a huge airbag at the bottom and you just got to you got to make the leap. The first and second story are a little easy, but number three is very different. Uh, that's way up there because you're 30 plus feet in the air. Is that about? It, it's quite high, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Now, it, did it, now, they obviously teach you how to go down and land. Uh, did it knock the wind out of you or did you, you just go, whoa, I'm glad I'm alive? Well, it knocked the, I would say it knocked the sense out of me for even doing <laughs> <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean, it wins you for a second, but the, uh, you learn how to hold uh, hold everything together as you're going down in the right proper placement as you, you come down on the mat. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was definitely uh, probably one of the one of the things that I, I I usually put on my you know new hire paperwork or like interesting cocktail hour facts. Yes, I jumped off a three story building and I'm still here. Wow! Cheers. Yeah, <laughs> good thing you didn't do a belly flop. No, you don't want to do that. Yeah, no. A couple people did. Believe me, they have the wealth to prove it. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. I cannot imagine. Well, let's uh, get into a, a little more. Uh, calm life than jumping off buildings here. And I'll give you a proper introduction. Wow. Brandy Sanders is the vice president of marketing at Modal, a company that provides e-commerce to the world's leading automotive dealers and brands. She's an award-winning marketing technologist, a leading global digital data science analytics and demand gen teams from startups to rapid growth to IPO. She has had leadership roles and collaborations with companies including Sony Music, Blackline, Etsy, Gartner, Magic Quadrant, Serious Decisions, Emmy Award winning media, NASDAQ, and INC Magazine, to name just a few. And recently she joined <laughs> Mudal as Vice President of Marketing and comes from a long line of automotive enthusiasts. And you regular listeners will remember that one of Brandy's colleagues, Todd Somerville, was recently yes. on Cars. Yeah, he's the VP of OEM Relations at Modal. He was guest number 1759. We're at 1767. So you can say, wow. hey, Todd, I'm ahead of you. <laughs> I'm ranking. I'm ranking. Watch out. There you go, ranking. There we go. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute to talk with Brandy, but first give our sponsors a listen. They are the ones that make this show possible. We'll be right back. We're not jumping off any buildings today, but we're gonna have some fun. <laughs> Did you know Covercraft offers you much more than car covers? 
floor mats, seat covers, and trunk liners? That's right. When you visit Covercraft.com, you'll find cologne custom bras, LeBra front end covers, and hood protectors that protect your vehicle's front end while you're on a road trip. No more rock chips or hours removing that nasty bug jerky from your grill and your paint. You'll find vehicle seat back organizers that keep everything in check, perfect for all the kids' things in the back seats, spidey gear webs that keep your cargo in your truck bed safely in place, seat heaters, cargo bars, pro nets, rooftop carriers, and pet travel barriers to keep Fido in the back seat. They even make tire covers. And don't forget their dash mat, dashboard covers that shield your vehicles from the sun's damaging UV rays. And their sunscreens, my favorite. Their pet protection pads are easy to install, easy to remove, and washable. They protect your floors and seats from Fido's damaging claws, messy fur, and slobber. Everything at Covercraft is carefully engineered and quality made. I've used their interior protection on all my vehicles for many years. And I've got a really great deal for you. If you use the code ya 21 yeah 21 at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off. That's right, 10% off. So just use the code ya 21 at checkout at Covercraft.com. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. I found a new way to protect my vehicle. American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collectibles of automobilia and automotive collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool automotive collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting us automotive enthusiasts since 1976. They provided me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love. I did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car and collectible insurance designed by collectors for collectors, just like you and me. All right, Brandy, we're back. We survived the fall. Let's go a little deeper into the corner and share a little more about your business and your new role there today. Uh, it's a nice way to get the inspirational tires smoking a little bit here. So, Brandy, take the wheel. All right, let's pull it. So, yes, I am uh, the new VP of marketing at Modal. Um, and like you mentioned before, it is an absolutely amazing platform. It's a state of the art e commerce platform that enables brands and dealers to deliver a world class customer buying experience through contactless, seamless, touch free, really one of the only complete end-to-end online buying processes, saving time and driving transactions, which of course for everyone in automotive basically means you get more profitable than a traditional car sale. And that's really at home on mobile, socially isolated, because here we are in 2021, still dealing with that. So it just lets dealers sell more cars in less time, which is really the name of the game at a higher profit um, and obviously greater levels of customer satisfaction. So I am super Super excited to be able to kind of blend a couple of worlds, you know, marketing and digital and storytelling and also automotive and e-commerce. So it's so crazy to watch all those things come together into one universe here at Modal. I would guess, yeah. I mean, look at your background, all these things you've learned from your background. You kind of brought them <laughs> all to fruition here all together at Modal. And it's a little crazy, yeah. Yeah, which is really, really cool. I love it. And when your colleague was on the show, of course, he shared a lot about what this thing is and how it works. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that happened last year with all of us being locked down, people still need to do things and they still Absolutely. bought cars and dealers had to figure out how do we sell cars to people when they can't come in here and we can't right? talk to them. And you guys yeah. were lined up. Did you know this was coming some way? I honestly, I only, I've only been with Moodle for about a little under 90 days. So I can't, I can shake the magic eight ball and say, <laughs> I know that there were great, yeah. <laughs> that there were some great, some great indicators that it was always going to head in this direction, yeah. but that because of the, the immediacy of what happened and how quickly that timeline was, I think it was just, you know, great timing, amazing product, solid leadership, and a really, really talented group of engineers and designers that came together and said, let's keep this alive. Uh, and as everyone knows, like people have said a thousand times, automotive is dead or like, you know, hey, this is going to be the thing that puts that the nail in the casket or, oh, this is going to be this or this is going to be that. But there's an entrepreneurial spirit that lives in automotive. Yeah. And I think 
what has happened with the ability to pivot on a dime, which they've done before and they'll do again, and it will keep the industry alive, in my opinion, for a legacy period of time, is make it work. Make it work. Grind, turn around, find a way to do it. How do you do it? Put the mask on, let's go. Put the mask on, let's go. You know, one of the other (laughs) things that has helped, of course, is loans are cheap. Money is fairly cheap. So getting a car loan, I don't know if it's ever been easier. Hopefully they've locked some of that down. They learned some lessons back in 08, 09 with the housing mm-hmm. industry and giving money to a lizard if it needed a home. Uh, <laughs> seemed to be- the guy called Lizard is here for the Aston Martin, sir. He'd like the tour. Yes, he would. There you go. So the, the automotive industry as you see it right now, and more importantly, those who spend money on cars, what's your, your magic eight ball as you say, looking ahead at this year? Do you see things progressing in a positive way? I do. And and I'm first off I'm I'm a eternal pessimist at heart, but I have to be cautiously <laughs> optimistic. I have to be I have to be that cautiously optimistic is a good way to put it. But I'm a huge data nerd. I love crunching numbers. I love being able to look at things and obviously there are things that we can predict, there are things we can't predict and we can certainly, you know, take a shot into the sun and say, "Hey, this is definitely how it's going to be," but I don't necessarily think that that's a firm thing for us. Like 21 going to 22, these were frontline operations, right? Automotive had to stay open. Like people have jobs to get to. Right. People need vehicles. And in fact, because of COVID, you saw literal statistical, qualitative, quantitative analysis that said we need cars because we're we're not getting on a crowded C train right. at 6 a.m. with 500 other people. Like for the first time ever, you know, de- hardcore New Yorkers, people who were taking the bus their whole life were like, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to get a car. Like, let's mm-hmm. do this. Yeah. And the industry turned on a dime and said, how can we do this? How can we execute? How can I have like a seamless on mobile, on iPad, on the showroom floor experience. And we were fortunate at Modal to have exactly what was needed for that to to be executed. But for the future of automotive, I think if anything, it's been a lesson that has propelled it forward. Exactly. Because, you know, you know, automotive is a legacy. It's a legacy industry. Like it doesn't need to change. We change for it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, it's not like your traditional barrier bro mentality. You know, we're talking about, this is a very certain type of world and it is a heritage in heirloom, kind of an environment. It's a legacy industry. So it's slow to change, but when the change comes and it's necessary, it is accelerated by things like this. And I think it's been for the benefit of it, honestly, because now you're going to be able to have, you know, provable data points behind leads that are coming to your website, how people interact with your product. And then, you know, hopefully just make that buying experience. And I, I know as a new mom, when I went to go buy my car, the six and a half hours I spent <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with, with like an infant and like going and, you know, running around the, the floor and getting that, you know, first pencil and getting all that done. By the time I got back to, you know, F and I and worth finance, I was so dead exhausted that I was like, wow, there's got to be a better way to do this. And there totally is now. And I think even more so in late 21 to 22, even as things air quotes return to normal, whatever that means, I think that there's going to be a need for that complete end to end automotive e-commerce experience. I mean, I definitely look forward to the day when we're back on a showroom floor and you can see the fleck and you can smell the rubber and you can, you know, take it out and like feel the weight of the car. But there's a really wonderful a uh, way to kind of level the playing field for people who are either intimidated by it or just, you know, it's always people want to go to that. What is it? The old data point. It's like people want to go to the dentist more than they want to go to a car salesman. <laughs> and so yeah, I feel selling. like that, you know, it's there. And so I think that there's a great and beautiful value to being able to walk that showroom floor. But there's also just a, a wonderful leap forward with being able to offer a buying experience from the safety of your home during a, a global pandemic. Right. Give the consumer what they're asking for. Mm-hmm. Fill that void and it works. Would you share what I like to call a driving inspiration, a key mentor that's been in your life, mm-hmm. someone that's helped you be successful and who was that person and how did they help you? So it's so funny because I, I've i gotten this question before and I really did. I sat and I thought about it for a while after I got the, the note about it. And I was like, geez, I, I really want to find one person that made, you know, uh, these paradigm shifts and stuff. And I mean, besides like your obvious guys like Zig Ziglar and Bob Proctor, shout out to all of them and all the old school people that are about paradigm shifting and affirmations and stuff like that. I would have to say that that ownership of what is successful and who's going to teach you always comes from myself. And that is not like, a, a, you know, a narcissistic nod to like arrogance, but it's really like there's no one else who knows 
what it's going to take, what grit is to you, what perseverance is for you, and what is going to get you out of bed in the morning, up at the crack of dawn, what's going to, when you lay your head down for the last time, like what's going to be important to you? What legacy are you leaving behind? What is it? Only you're going to know that. No conference, no book, no nothing will ever give you the answer to that more than your own self because the drivers that put you behind the wheel and say, get up, go do it every day again and again, even when you get shot down, even when you're told no, even when you're kicked out of the room, even when you're rejected a thousand times, that thousand and one time, I think it really, it has to come from yourself. And I feel like if anything, I've been inspired by people I've, I've actively mentored because I looked for mentor my whole life. And then I turn around, I had to let the other half of my career and I'm like, Hey, I'm the mentor. I was always How did I get here? I became, I'm now I'm the mentor, which is great. And I think, you know, holding that door open and, and being able to say, look, put the work in, show up, let the data speak for itself. Reinvention and agility are keys. Don't be put into a stereotype or a box. Break it. Break. Because someone <laughs> has to be the first one to do it, and I'm more than happy to be there for that. Yeah. Well, to have that self-drive that you have, you look at people that aren't as motivated and the yeah. people that are super motivated like you are, super energetic. What powers that machine inside of you? Oh, my gosh. That is such a great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What kind of energy drink are you drinking every morning? <laughs> <laughs> I really are childhood. No, I mean, I feel like I'm sure there's a psychologist somewhere who's got a question about like traumatic childhood and drive. Like there's some, there's someone out there who's got at least three chapters in a self-help book somewhere, on that. But yeah. no, yeah, I feel like honestly, I, I think when you find something you love and it's easy for me to find things that I'm passionate about because I see beauty everywhere. Like I see when I look at a junked out car, like my husband and I, who's, who's also an enormous auto enthusiast and, and we can, we'll save that for the latter half of the, for okay. the latter half of okay. the podcast, yeah. but we go, you know, we'll go out, we'll be in a junkyard and we'll be looking across, you know, the graveyard of, of dilapidated cars. And you'll just see that one car yep. and realize that's a treasure out of all the other things, the ability to see value where other people have passed it over, made assumptions said that that's not worth anything, the ability to pick that thing up and to breathe life into it again and get it to growl for you and come alive and drive it out of there. To me, I feel that way about everything in life. It is what you make it. Can you see it? Then you can be it. That's great. Well, let's talk a little bit about that mentoring and helping others. How mm -hmm. would you advise other women who are seeking to get into a career path like you've had? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare yourself for some high level imposters. Buckle to up. And, uh, buckle up, baby, because uh, you better have a sense of humor and know how to play chess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I would say holding the door open is huge. Mentorship is huge. Uh, upskilling, upskilling yourself is enormous. Like I think a lot of folks, um, particularly in like legacy in industries, we tend to get and I wouldn't say this is necessarily me, but certainly with other industries, and I've been through, you know, music, film, television, media, lots of very old school industries, they tend to get into one spot and then just kind of nest, right? Mm -hmm. And they get really comfortable. And then when a disruption comes, like, you know, COVID or something, or e -com or like digital is here, or this is here, or electric or whatever, you have to be able to move quickly. So for me, agility is something that mm -hmm. I, I stress again and again, is the ability to reinvent and the ability to to say, okay, so I did this thing for like, I don't know, 10 years. Like I did film, television, media, study, music, 20 years. I'm taking it to e -com now because I want a flexible schedule. Maybe I want to, you know, work from home or see my kids or right. do X, Y, Z hobby or project and spin that, that side gig up. And so I think that that is huge. The ability to reinvent and to say, this is what I was, but now I'm changing into this to chameleon yourself through that identity. And to not be tied to the old identity is just massive. Mm. You know, a, a great example, actually, my husband, uh, Walter, amazing guy. It's like, I'm the one who got lucky here. <laughs> <laughs> he would probably argue with me. Yeah, I with think that. I would argue um, with, with that too, but keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to take that card. I'm going to put that in my pocket. But if you looked at my husband if, if from just face value, when we first met each other, I had a, a wonderful string of just disastrous relationships as, as most driven women usually do. <laughs> and, and you get into this situation. Situation. I'm outside. I'm at some random party, and I'm looking up at the stars. And I'd read a book about Ava Gardner, uh, who later regretted, you know, all the Hollywood stuff, and was like, "Man, I should have just married that hometown mechanic." 
So I looked up at the stars and said, just send me a mechanic. I kid you not. I kid you not. He came out on the porch of our friend's house who was also a mechanic. He refurbished rat rods. And we met each other that night. Wow. So when I first looked at him, I was like, okay, this guy's got the big beard. He's we're, we're literally in the middle of nowhere. Pennsylvania. It's like a palette burning party with like Natty Bush and Pap's Blue Ribbon, you know, like nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing like it just it's so low key. We're not and New York anymore, baby. No, baby. It was absolutely Green Acres when we met, believe me. And so <laughs> he had Dickies on, you know, he was just like he was he looked like a mechanic. And I just kept thinking, oh, wow, like he's, he's a mechanic. Careful what you and wish you mind- for. Careful what you yeah, wish exactly. for. Brandy. Well, God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And so but when you look at people on the surface, you're just like, well, he's a mechanic and this is what he'll probably do with his life. And this is what this will be. And when I talk about reinvention for my husband, he's halfway, you know, he came out, got certified and, you know, was working really great institutions, but was kind of like, gee, do I want to, you know, have my back blown out by age 40 and have burns all over my arms? Do I, is this really what I want to do? How can I change? And he went back to school for business, which mid, mid career, after you've worked so hard to get, you know, your certifications is huge. Yes. You're coming back in the room with a 20 year old who's got like skinny jeans on and like a $10 kombucha. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're, and you're strolling in with like, you know, still toed boots on a Dickies. Like, Hey, I just took an engine out of a car. I'm yeah, here to who's get Who's that business. guy? Is he here to fix right? someone's car? <laughs> but what happened is, is a reinvention. And he came out the other yeah, end yeah. doing automotive and e-commerce and was a totally, a totally different person, same level of integrity, same level of drive, but reinvented an air quotes, you know, identity. Yeah. And I think that when we talk about how do how do I get from point A to point point B or how do I get from here to there or what should I do for my career? It's what gets you out of bed in the morning and do you have the power to reinvent or turn? Yep. Because I think the days of like that one, and I wish it weren't so, but the days of that one job for like 40 years, yeah, long gone. I wish I knew anyone who had that as much as I wish pensions <laughs> existed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so that ability to reinvent and to change all the neural nets you've, you've gotten where it's like, I am only this. Right. Yeah. That is huge because people put you in a box, you have an identity, you, you need to be able to turn around and say, no, I'm going to change. I'm going to be this now. And it's huge, you know? Golden nuggets yeah. you were dropping there for people listening. <laughs> uh, absolutely. All over the, I'm, I'm picking them all up too here. Uh, you know, you did this here with uh, Modal because uh, shifting from where you were into this new thing. So when you think about how excited you are, and I think you're kind of an excited person, uh, yeah. how excited you are about the future with this company, yeah. uh, you talk a little bit about change and becoming something mm-hmm. new and, and this new e-commerce world yeah. that we're all in. What do you foresee as your favorite parts of this? new career path for you right now? Honestly, it's about growth, which is such a, I realize that's such a cliche thing to say. Of course, it's a career with growth. (laughs) But no, I think that it comes down to the ability that, or the idea that it's not just automotive e-commerce, it's opening the door for people who be intimidated to buy. Like I distinctly remember I had a, actually it's one of the, one of the cars that my husband and I are refurbishing. So we had this, um, oh my God, what was it? 1988 Dodge Omni. So it was a turbo engine. We did a swap and the thing kicked over one day and, you know, I was actually pregnant and we wanted to get a car because guess what? Car seats in 1988 (laughs) Omnis with a turbo engine don't necessarily fit together. And I remember the process, the intimidation of, of going in and just trying to talk to people and immediately they deflected reflected to him. And, right. and meanwhile, I was going to be the one probably buying the car because my husband's like, hey, I've got 15 we're fixing and I'm good with these guys. <laughs> like, sure. this is all about the car seat journey, right? And it, it was just, it was kind of like this acknowledgement of like, man, that's really, that sucks. Like, you know what? I, I wish I could just do this online and then just show up and get the keys and be like, yeah, and then take it for a test drive and exactly. sign everything and just be gone and not have to be, you know, in the waiting room or, you know, how busy it is on the showroom floor. Yeah. And especially with COVID, I feel like that that world has changed so much and they reacted so well to it. But I think that being able to buy online, being able to, you know, get your hard credit pool on your phone instead of having to take out 50 different forms of ID and photocopy them and bury them in carbonite for 10 months and then come back with a fax machine that's in like zeros and ones in the back F and I office. Like, I think that being able to have like that seamless thing, just like People are spoiled by Amazon. People are spoiled by, you know, the immediacy of online buying. I think that we took for granted that world and it's changed. And I think it, but it opens the door for people who are intimidated by the buying experience or maybe didn't have the best experience trying to buy in the first place. Exactly. And I think that's huge for me because I want everyone to be able to have the same passion 
for their new car. Yeah. There's a thrill that comes with that. It's like a rite of passage. Like I literally remember the first time I got in a car that I bought with my own money. Oh yeah. It's, it wasn't, exciting. it wasn't even that spectacular. <laughs> it wasn't. No, but you <laughs> did it. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. This no, is it's... mine. This is my freedom. I can go in this car and go anywhere. Yep. And I want people to be able to easily get to that. I want them to chase that dream car, get in the car and then drive it off the lot. Awesome. And that's what Modal can do. Let's take a short break. Thank our sponsors. We come back. I'm going to talk a little bit or ask you a bit about a challenge in your life. So Woo-hoo. sit tight. We'll be right back. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you go to LinkageMag.com and use the code CARSYAT, you'll save $10 on your subscription. Do it today. That's LinkageMag.com. Crash jewelry is handmade from the metal of luxury cars while preserving the original factory paint. Founder Christy Schimpke came up with the idea when she moved her jewelry studio into her husband's Los Angeles auto body shop. After watching beautiful Porsche ultraviolet fenders and Ferrari Rosso Corsa hoods head to the scrapyard, she developed her own unique upcycling process of cutting, bending, and sanding the metal into unique wearable pieces of beautiful automotive art. For Women's History Month here on Cars Yeah, Crash Jewelry is giving away a special Ferrari Art Deco cuff. The cuff includes an empowering message engraved inside. Enter to win today by subscribing at CrashJewelry.com. Plus, Christy is offering Cars Yeah listeners 10% off in March when you use the code Cars yeah at checkout. That's CrashJewelry.com and use the code Cars yeah today. And don't forget to follow Christy on Instagram at Crash Jewelry. All right, Brandy, uh, what's been one of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome so far in your career? And and how did you do it? And more importantly, what did you learn from that to move forward? Oh, obstacles. That's a great one. So <laughs> yeah, in the roadway. <laughs> I, I was just like getting out of trail park for one. Uh, I was, yeah, like, metaphorically and literally yep. hit me up if you want details. Oh, gosh. Um, no, funny. so I mean, I would say being first generation to kind of break that mold and like, you know, um, the mold of like what's expected, right? Mm-hmm. Like just following kind of like a very traditional or not even traditional, just non-existent path. Like, hey, your parents were this or you were this or your family is that. And and being able to say, nope, like not acceptable. I didn't come here for mediocrity. I can sleep when I die. Let's go. <laughs> like um, I when I die, I'm just, I'm, I'm literally, if my, if my life journey were a car, I'm like, pedal to the floor yeah. all the time because it can come with no warning. So I'm like, I'm skidding through Le Mans like a maniac, <laughs> I you love know? It. I love um, it. So yeah, I mean, I feel like overcoming obstacles, there's been so many, I just, I can't even count anymore, but I think breaking stereotypes, you know, like I, I studied classical music. Uh, my dad was a truck driver, so let that sink in for a minute there. Um, <laughs> I'm singing coloratura opera and arias and, and learning Italian. And my dad is just like long hauling it on the road. And like everything smells like rubber and t- tires and so many car shows. And I crawled around in the pit of the Daytona 500 in my beautiful little dress and got black. And So I, I think that <laughs> there's there's all those like those little boxes that people like love to be able to label something. And I'm just like, give it a try. I encourage you to try because it is like un- unlabelable, the experience <laughs> that I've had. It's, it's wild and it's all over the place. And I've been so lucky 
to be able to first off have the the privilege to age long enough to even turn around and say I had this experience because yeah. there's a lot of people we've left behind who haven't. And I think about that all the time. And so uh, obstacles, I mean, there's been a lot of stereo, you know, stereotypical stuff, sexism, um, you know, people just thinking, oh, well, you know, um, I'm looking at you and I can tell that you're not into cars. Uh, is it? It's the Alexander McQueen suit and the red bottom shoes. Does it throw you off a little? But that's okay because I know what a slant six is. And I drove halfway across this country to get this thing out of this garage. And I'm going to take the McQueen off and I'm going to put my steel-toed boots on. And I'm still going to pull the engine with my husband. So <laughs> careful with the label. Um, yeah. But I mean, yeah, breaking stereotypes. The big obstacle is just, you know, you can... It, don't judge a book by its cover necessarily. Sometimes that book's spot on and you've got it from, you know, 10 yards away, but sometimes not. And there's, you know, there's so many great stories behind people. And I feel like the obstacle is putting aside all the biases we've inherited or, you know, had because of our unique experiences in our life and just keeping it open with like a childlike sense of wonder all the time. Ah, uh, powerful, powerful. What are some things you'd still like to accomplish in your life? I'm almost well, <laughs> afraid to ask that question. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to run through the list. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> here are the restorations we must get done. The 1958 Plymouth Savoy 2D hardtop. That is a full restoration. Ooh. That's three, three quarters of that is my husband. Our 1988 Dodge Omni, the one with the turbo engine swap. That thing is still sitting. We're working on that. Um, we have a completed SRT4 ACR turbo upgrade. That's done. He stayed stock. I couldn't convince him otherwise. Uh, 1991 Dodge Daytona Shelby. That is a complete rebuild. We're working on the gut right now. And a 1990 Dodge Daytona Shelby V&T, one out of number 536 uh, made. And we are uh, working on a scrub out and sand down for that as well. So wow. that's the, when we say bucket list, those are the restorations that after a, a quick debrief with my husband. <laughs> that's just necessary. that's just the current list. Yeah. Next year, that's there'll the, be more. That's, that's what we're allowed to talk about online i'm sure he's got a list of cars buried somewhere that like i don't even know he's purchased so um oh but yeah gosh. and i think obviously beyond that i would say i love opening the doors for for other folks right so like yeah. i think when i think bucket list i think you know it would be really sweet to to be able to uh start like a mentorship program for other women who are coming into like non-traditional fields where usually we're like there's like one of us which is great for the bathroom lines at these conferences. I got to tell you, like, it's pretty sweet. It's like, hey, there's only two of us here. <laughs> it's like, there's no lines. Let's go. This is wonderful. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's the slight upsell. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's, I feel like every day it changes a little. You know, I have a, a three-year-old. I'm so fortunate for that. Oh, and cool. I'd love to be able, my a big bucket list would be getting her that car, right? And then teaching her how to pull her first engine uh, with my husband. Nice. Well, no doubt she'll be getting her finger dirty and oily and greasy <laughs> at some point and that'll be so much fun for all of you oh how much fun is that well is there been a greatest high point for you so far uh, a moment that you're really proud of so far no doubt there's more to come i mean you're just getting started but <laughs> although you seems like you've been doing this forever but uh is there one that really stands out you'd like to share oh gosh that's got to be the birth of my daughter yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's such a it's such a default. And for people who don't have kids, they're like, yeah, all right, sure, lady, whatever. It's you know, it's when you worked on that one movie, or it's like when there's a marquee at Madison Square Garden, <laughs> or you know, that one time you got to meet Mandy Broderick. No, so I mean, I think it's definitely if you don't have kids, you're probably not going to know what I'm talking about. But if you do, you'll know. I think it's like my greatest my greatest award. Is her. Yeah. Oh, children. I'm so lucky. Yeah. Children are spectacular. And, you know, I haven't said this, but you're going to get a scoop here today, Brandy. I'm going to be a grandpa this year. Get out of here. Seriously. <laughs> we just, my daughter just announced this. Uh, come August, which is the month that my. My wife's birthday is. We're going to have oh our first grandchild from our first. Oh, first congratulations! Yeah. Isn't that cool? So that'll be that is amazing. A whole nother level of coolness. Where you know, oh yeah. So that's very cool. But <laughs> now the only problem I'm having with this is Jill, my wife, looked at me and she said, uh, "Baby's due in August. That's car month for Pebble." <laughs> Listen, listen, we walked with my with my daughter only a few months old at Carlisle and the New York Auto Show and literally every other like, you know, all the oh my God, we went to so many cars. Yeah. I was I was plum exhausted. We had her in the carrier and everything, but I was like, All right, kid, we're getting you in there early. Let's get all the cute shots. Let's like scoot up over here and get in this car yep. and 
So, you know, and it's even more special. You know, you could get little little plates for the back of the stroller with oh, like yeah. a vanity. Now, all that stuff's already getting on order. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know it's in part. I carried my daughter, Paige, who's having uh, her first child here, as I mentioned, around Pebble Beach when she was one. And one of the most memorable moments was I was standing there and she was reaching up and I would not, she was on my back, and those backpacks I used to have. Yep. And she was reaching up and grabbed a leaf pulled it off. I wasn't paying attention, obviously, you know, new food, new father. I'm looking at the cars, right? <laughs> Puts it in her mouth and then proceeds to throw up down the back of my shirt. So yeah, that was, uh, Oh that was, yeah. <laughs> there that's, you go. Yeah. That's like, those are the moments you can't really like explain to someone when it's like, when you've got like the vomit under clothes thing and you're like, but I love you so much here. Let me help you with that. Yeah. Like it's, it's a unique moment, especially there. You're like, Oh, cool. Hey, look, it's the, I was just going to talk about that. The card, the dream card too. I was going to be like, Hey, look, it's the, uh, XKSS. Oh, I just got puked on. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. I'll be right back. Yeah. And Pardon then, me. Well, that sounds like fun. Well, yes, having children, absolutely spectacular. We're going to take another real quick break. We're going to come back. I'm going to ask you about your ultimate drive and with somebody. So keep the seatbelts on. We'll be right back. Have you looked under your hood recently? The average car today has more than 70 computers and 100 million lines of code. Today and tomorrow, being a professional technician requires an understanding of technology, computers, and electrical systems that are highly advanced and very complex. Cars yeah is honored to support TechForce Foundation as our charity of choice. Their efforts to help young people pursue a technical education and a fulfilling career as automotive techs is the key to an inspired life. Through scholarships, grants, and good old-fashioned hands-on experiences with vehicles, TechForce and Cars yeah are working together to connect young people with viable careers. Join us and learn more by visiting techforce.org today. So, Brandy, if you could go for a drive with anybody in the world, living or deceased, mm. who would that person be? What kind of car would you be in? Would you be driving or would they be driving? And what would be a few questions you'd ask this person? Uh, this, I got to tell you, I I really, I, I thought about this one for a little bit. Good, <laughs> so, good. I mean, all right. So I'm going to start with the car because that's, that's yep. an easier answer okay. to start with. I'll start with that part of the Jenga. So I saw the model once and couldn't afford it much less the car, but the 1962 250 GTOs, you know what? Only 39 models were made, <laughs> but I'm going to take it back. All right. I'm going to take it back. I was going to do 1962 250 GTO. I'm going to do the Le Mans winning original 1955 D type. And actually you just mentioned Pebble Beach. This just sold a couple uh, years ago. I think it uh, for 22 million at Pebble Beach, oh. the Jaguar XK Supersport. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's a lot. It's a kind of, I'm the dream car would be kind of like the one that is at Peterson's, the McQueen one, that green one. Yes, with the Tony Nancy seats and the yeah, Von Dutch uh, thing yeah. on the deck. Yeah. But I personally prefer fire engine red, maybe a metallic fleck. Uh, definitely Tony Nancy seats, though. <laughs> I would say driver, I'm totally giving this to my husband. Like, he can drive because okay. I just want to be able to lay my head back as we cruise the Pacific Coast yeah. and listen to the music of the engine without having to focus on the road because I, I do enough driving. I'm like, here, you can take over. You can focus on that. I just want to enjoy the sounds of the engine. Oh, uh, um, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. 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 I, well, that's pretty cool. Okay. Well, I'll see what I can do about that. <laughs> Trying to find you one yeah, of those. Yeah, you let, you let me know because I think most of the, the 1962 250 GTO is like, I was at 48.4 million or something. And the other one's like 22 million. Well, <laughs> one went for 70 million. Yeah. They're, they're way, way up there. That's nosebleed yeah. tech territory. Like, but the D, dream, the D dream type, car. yeah, you, you cut, yeah, you, you like you're a, a cheap date, Brandy, the $22 million car instead <laughs> of the 55 million. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh, I, would, I would wear some Bucha Latte jewelry oh, and some yeah. McQueen and make it worth it. We get some good pictures, but nobody touch anything. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, no gold fish crackers. incredible car, wonderful touring car. I mean, just really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah but, I can see you in that. Now, really is, is there, yeah, beyond. Now, is there a book you've read that you'd like to share with our listeners? 
So it's funny because I think recently, I mean, there's a ton of great books like Four Hour Work Week and like any of the stuff by Proctor or Ziegler. I feel like are, those are just like default answers. But I think I've become almost more of a watcher, especially when it comes to cars. Like I've gotten really into Roadkill Garage and Vice Grip Garage and anything by Donut Media because I feel like there's a whole like new generation of people who are like super into sharing the actual work that goes into it. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> like this is the dirty. There are mosquitoes. We're pulling engines. We're doing all this kind of great stuff. We're seeing like uncommon cars. And I mean, I really, I feel like I could probably jump into any of those shows and really love them. But as far as it goes for book, I would definitely say Tools of Titans is mm. a great book. That was where they, you know, get a couple of sentences, a little bit from um, all kinds of leaders, like, you know, your traditional like sales leaders and your tech leaders and your independent business owners and your entrepreneurial spirit type people. Yep. And they talk about like everyone from like Arnold Schwarzenegger to like, you know, um, Steve Jobs and like people like that. But they they gather all these quotes. And I think it's great because in the day to day grind, it gets so easy to lose good habits and to get caught up with like all the kind of reactionary working and getting buried under execution. And then you look up and it's like eight months later and you haven't done any like work for yourself or like evangelizing your own career or anything like that. And I think if you open the book a day, you know, take one page a day or look at it. I think it's really useful. And then naturally there's a ton of Lee Iacocca books. I feel like if I don't say that my husband is literally going to be like, that's it. <laughs> I'm really, we're getting a divorce. Um, but you know, where have all the great leaders gone? Stuff like that. It, it's always worth it. A read and it's the kind of thing in addition to all those great uh, YouTubers that I come back to a lot to read. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, when you think about watching, I think about Bogey, All Girls Garage. She's uh, oh yeah, she's been a guest on the show. Yeah. Great lady. I cool. uh, had a chance to meet her many times at SEMA and talk with her. And she's done a, a great job to help uh, champion women in the automotive yeah. sector and especially that are getting under the hood, which is yep. great. But the book you mentioned uh, is one of those wonderful books by Tim Ferriss. He's written a lot of yes. great stuff. Tim Tools Ferriss, of Titan. Yes. Yeah. So I'll make sure I put links to those. And of course, later. Lee Iacocca's book, who he authored, uh, Where Have All the Great Leaders Gone? On Brandy's show notes page, just go to carsia.com, type in Brandy, B-R-A-N-D-E-E -E Sanders, and you'll find her page right there with all these great links. And of course, you'll be able to follow her uh, at the company she's with, which we'll talk about how to link up with them in just a second. Brandy, hey, you've taken me on an amazing fast journey here. Oh my gosh, what a spectacular lady you are. I, you've got me fired up. I don't need an energy drink when I'm around you. I just need to listen to you <laughs> Red, speak. Red Bull for your soul. <laughs> you are. You are the Red Bull for our soul. I want to thank you for sharing your amazing journey, your thank enthusiasm, you. your passion. Before I let you go, is there one little parting piece of guidance or wisdom you might offer us before you and your husband rip off into the sunset in that jail? <laughs> I mean, I would say for people, the past like two years have been so brutal. They've been so hard. And it, for lots of people, you were in a hard place before it even started. And there's so many hours of self-doubt and depression. And, you know, there's so many things that can tell you no and put you into a corner or a box. And uh, I'm here to tell you that the last mile is always the hardest, always. But if you can just come around the bend, there's going to be the end, right? You can get to the end. You just have to pedal a little bit more. Yep. So I would say, always say yes. Read the book, eat the dessert. We could die tomorrow. Buy the car. Yes. With leather trim. Yes. With bucket <laughs> seats. Yes. With the heated steering wheel. Cause it's a one-way ticket. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm all in after the past two years, I'm all in floor down. Let's go. Okay. If you're not fired up after this talk, uh, you're comatose. So, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> from, from the wisdom words from the daughter of a trucker, you got it all right there. Everything you need to know about moving ahead. Absolutely. Hey, what are the many ways we can follow you? First and foremost, Modal. Yes, absolutely. Obviously, M O. D-A-L is a uh, modal and our website is modal up M-O-D-A-L-U-P dot com. Love it. Love it. And you it. can also Love obviously it. find us on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram and, and all of our other channels. Now, do you play out in the social media world where people can keep up with you? Absolutely. I'm all over LinkedIn, uh, Brandy Sanders. There's, there's, I think there's two or three of us now, which is amazing because I have two E's on my name. So I'm kind of like, I'm flattered there's more than one of us. <laughs> um, Brandy Sanders, B-R-A-N-D-E-E -E Sanders, S-A-N-D-E-R-S on LinkedIn, and then BrandySanders.com, and then Planet Brandy, Instagram, Twitter, you name it, we're there. All right, cool. I want to thank also Lisa Hagendorf uh, at Centerpiece Public Relations for introducing me to this magnificent Absolutely. lady. She also brought uh, your cohort to the show. So thank you, Lisa, for the great job that you do. Mm -hmm. Brandy, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, your energy, your enthusiasm. Oh, my gosh. 
I am fired up. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. All right, 10-4. There you go, good buddy. Did you know that Cars Yeah! is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Libsyn, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. And Cars Yeah! is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique in very personal way, well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyad.com or through the website at carsyad.com today to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to carsyad.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!